You're watching part three of our four part door build series. In part one, we milled all of our material to size and in part two, we milled all of our joinery. Today, we're going to do our final assembly on our door and get it ready for finish. With our door dry assembled, it's time to lay out the position of our draw bore pins. Draw boring creates a dowel or pin that holds the mortise and tenon joints together and because the two holes are offset from each other, the pin actually pulls the door together. To mark these locations, I used a birdcage awl and then I took my styles to the drill press and drilled a quarter inch hole in the locations that I marked. Next, I reassemble the door and mark the location of the holes in my tenons. I'm using a 3 16 diameter brad point bit to mark the hole slightly offset. Notice that I'm pushing the brad point bit tight into the inside portion of the hole in my rail. This creates the correct offset in the correct place for my draw bore pin so that my joint will pull tight together. Then it's back to the drill press to drill these holes in my tenons. Be sure to use the quarter inch bit to drill these holes so the hole will be the proper size. And I also use a backer block under my tenon so I don't get blowout or chip out in my tenon. Now we're ready to do our final assembly. I glue my tenons with Type Bond 3 glue because it's a waterproof or exterior grade of glue. I take my time to make sure all my joints are positioned appropriately and work my way from one end of the door to the other. I install my panels dry so that they can float within the frame. I'm also using door spacers around the panels in my door. These work much like a space ball does in a standard cabinet door, but they're a larger dimension so that they fit nicely in the large groove of our frame. With all the panels and rails installed, it's time to glue the tops of all my tenons and install my top rail all in one shot. At this point, I want to check that my door is perfectly square by measuring the diagonals of the door. If the door's not perfectly square, now's the time to make any adjustments before the glue dries. Once we're satisfied with the squareness of the door, I can add a few clamps to hold the door together while I install my draw bore pins. Now's a great time to take a few minutes and wipe up any excess glue. Draw bore pins are easy to install. All it takes is a sharpened dowel. This is a quarter inch oak dowel, a little bit of glue, and a mallet. I like to sharpen the tips of my dowels in a pencil sharpener, it creates the perfect taper to make it easy to drive the pin through our offset holes. You'll notice the pins have a slight bend in them once they've been driven through the door. This is because of the offset holes, the pin is pulling the door together. Once all the pins are installed, I trim them flush with a small detail saw. Now I need to create the rabbit for my glass to fit into. I'm using an infinity rabbiting bit with a large diameter bearing that turns it into a flush trim bit. This will allow me to get into the groove that I made in the door with the rail and style router bit set. All that's left is to square the corners of our rabbit to do this. I'm using a sharp Narex bench chisel and I take my time working my way down, removing chips so that I get a nice clean rabbit. Final piece to be made for our door is our glass stop. To make the glass stop, I take some extra material left over from our door and I route it at the router table using a quarter inch radius roundover bit to create a simple bead profile. I route two edges of my workpiece and then take it to the table saw to rip these pieces free. Be sure to set your saw blade to the appropriate height and use good work holding methods. I like to use a micro jig gripper because it holds both pieces of my workpiece as they pass the saw blade. My first cut rips my workpiece from the larger piece, then I lower my blade and my second cut and third cut will rip my pieces to final size.
Installing a modern lock set is simple, but I chose to use an antique full mortise lock set on my door. To do this, I have to create a large deep mortise in the edge of my door. To do this, I'm using a CRB7 router base plate for my router, a homemade jig to support the router, and an infinity upcut spiral bit. This bit will help pull the chips up and out of the mortise. I take multiple passes because this mortise is a couple of inches deep to get to my final bit. My finished mortise needs to be a 5 eighths of an inch wide while my router bit is only a half inch wide. I route from one side of the door then reverse my template and my router and complete the 5 eighths wide mortise. This method ensures that my mortise is perfectly centered in my door. My guide jig does double duty and produces a chiseling stop. I reposition the jig on my door and use a chisel to square up the corners of my mortise. This jig is nothing more than a couple of pieces of scrap and a couple of plywood blocks on top that act as a stop for my router base and a guide for my chisel. Either ends of my mortise need a shallow extension to hold the different parts of my lock. To make these, I simply use a Forstner bit in my handheld drill filled to the proper depth and then finish them up with a chisel. Now I just need to check the fit of my lock in the mortise. A small detail that can help the door from sticking in humid weather is to add a small chamfer or bevel to the edge of the door. I mark out a line on one edge of the door, the part that will be to the inside of the jam, and I use a hand plane to plane a very shallow bevel of one or two degrees. This bevel provides clearance for the door to swing past the jam as it opens and closes, preventing that sticking in humid weather. I like to round over all the sharp edges on the outside of my door with an eighth inch radius round over bit. This creates a really nice clean look to the door and eliminates any sharp edges. Stay tuned for part four where we'll install our hardware, finish our door, install our glass, and hang our door in our door frame. Be sure to check out our blog for even more detail on our project.